Welcome to Fantasy Football Hub. In this video, I'll be showing my current draft for the upcoming game week, game week 32, in which I'll be using my free hit chip. Now, as you may have seen on videos in the past, I've spoken with the notorious guests that we have on about 32 as the week where a lot of managers and them in particular are going to be utilizing their free hit chip. And it's here. The week has finally come. Now, of course, I'm recording this on Monday, so midweek games still to be played. But right now, this is kind of what I'm thinking. So what we're going to do, we're going to build this player by player using, of course, as always, Fancy Football Hub's My Team tool. And if you want to do this yourself, of course, the link, as always, is down in the description. It's a great tool. You put your players in, have a play around, see what it's looking like, utilize the hub's predicted points. And yeah, just to see what an algorithm is saying. It gives you a little bit more of an insight into are the players you're picking actually decent statistically or are they just gut feels? And, and if they are, nothing wrong with that, but at least you know. Okay, let's go through then player by player, starting, of course, with the goalkeeper. Now, I actually think that the goalkeeper is one of the most interesting positions this week because I don't think there are too many clear standout clean sheets sam johnston obviously the palace goalkeeper as you can see doing pretty well now ever since he's come into the team given guaita's injury he's been doing well last couple of games only conceded one goal in decent form as a team ever since hodgson has taken back over they look pretty good you know a lot of talent going forward but solid defensively as well obviously southampton and leeds not the best attacking teams but they're playing everton at home now, if you look at the fixtures as a whole across this game week, I don't actually see too many clean sheets there. We've got Arsenal, of course, playing Southampton and Liverpool against Forest. Those are pretty good. But for me, I want players outside of the goalkeepers for those teams. And obviously, there's a limit of three players. So I think that Johnson is the best alternative outside of those two big teams, to be completely honest. And, and that is why I have gone for him. Now, speaking of Liverpool players, the reason why there is no Alisson in my team is because I'm going with the fullbacks as it stands. Trent and Robertson are in. I don't really need to even speak about these guys. They've got a great fixture on paper. We know what they can do. Obviously, they've both been letdowns this season. Trent in a slightly different position now, playing a little bit more inverted, as we've seen other teams do. The likes of City and, uh, and Arsenal with Zinchenko doing it so well. I don't know if that necessarily means he's going to be more involved in an attacking sense. But it seemed to be in the last game. Who knows if that will manifest in this game against Forrest. But nonetheless, a decent chance at a clean sheet. And of course, we know what these, these guys can do going forward. So who knows? 100% there is whole potential there. And for that reason, they've got to be in my team. Now I'm going to play three at the back. And I think that this last pick is, is a controversial one. Trippier is a man that's been in all of our teams for pretty much the entire season, right? I mean, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, will have had him for the entire season. Now, Tottenham at home, on paper, is not a good fixture. But but what I want to do here, I just want to bring up the fixtures entirely for the upcoming game week. And you tell me, where are the clean sheets? Outside of Arsenal, and outside of Liverpool, and then maybe Palace, I don't see many clean sheets here at all. I mean, genuinely, I, I couldn't put my finger on any. Wolves away? I don't think so. Leicester, uh, you know, at home, why, why couldn't they score a goal? Brentford at home to Villa? No. Villa away to Brentford? It's unlikely. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, there aren't clear clean sheets here. And therefore, despite the fact that Trippier doesn't have a good fixture, I mean, of course, you would probably expect Spurs to score one goal in that game. There's no other option. And because he's so good going forward, and we know how amazing he is for bonus when he does get even one return, I think... I'm just going to have to go with him. It's not an EO play, despite the fact that it may look like it. And I can see that, yes, it is a little bit more of a, of a thinking in my mind that, okay, might as well cover him slightly. There's no point risking it too much. I do just think he is the best pick outside of Robertson and Trent, though. An Arsenal defender, yeah, would be better. But as you'll see when we get into the rest of the team, I, I want three attackers in that game. Trippier, right, he gets an assist, say, from a corner. They lose the game 2-1, right? He gets an assist from a corner. We know how good he is for baseline. And that's eight, nine points right there. You know, I just, I just, I don't see a better option. And for me, I think that's the reason why I'm going to go with him. It's, it is a controversial one, I will say, because on a free hit, you normally want to go for it, right? And you want to just kind of back your own intuitions with results. 
And if I'm if I'm here saying that I think Spurs will score, but I'm picking a Newcastle defender, I understand why that may seem a little bit backwards, but that is my current reasoning. If there was a better option, I'd be on it. I just don't see one. Maybe I'm missing something, but that is my personal thinking. All right, let's get on to midfield because I'll be playing a back three. Now, the obvious one here is Salah. I think we'll come onto captaincy in a little bit, but no doubt about it. He is a very good captain shout this week. He's in good form, I would say, hesitantly. Now, we all know what he can do. There's no point talking about him for too long. But I will say that his, his underlying stats and his performances in recent games, at least statistically, have been very good. Uh, we saw against Arsenal. That's one of his best statistical games ever. Obviously, it didn't turn out that well for him. But, but you know what I'm saying. He does look to be getting a lot of chances. And, you know, Forrest away defensively are just, just not good. So, yeah, he seems to, to me to be a, a pretty obvious pick and definitely a consideration for captaincy. And that's kind of the reason why I've gone Johnston because, you know, we've got the three Liverpool players here. Is there room for Alisson? I don't think so. Let's get on to Arsenal now. Now, Saka. We need to talk about this, lad, because I've, I've just I've just not had a good experience in this season. Missed penalty last week, frustrated me to my, to my core. And therefore, I just don't want him in my team. I just don't. I think that, that Martinelli picks himself. Ever since Jesus has come, up, come back into the team, he's just been on absolute flames, playing phenomenally well. All the chances seem to be either going through him or falling to him. He's very, very heavily involved. I do think that a lot of that is down to Saliba not being in the team. And I think that that is impacting Saka going forward. Obviously, if you look at the passing lanes of Arsenal, Holding just doesn't have the progressive passing capability that Saliba does have. Whereas Gabriel is still in that team and with Zinchenko on that left-hand side, they're functioning a lot better down the left as they usually do than they, they normally do on the right due to Saliba's absence, which is impacting the right-hand side. But Martinelli and Jesus, they link up so well. So for me, Martinelli is a lock. And as I say, I just, Saka, man, he, he seems a little bit, I don't know, fatigued, just not in great form. Odegaard is still the metronome of that team, is absolutely running it. Yes, he plays a little bit deeper, but as we saw for his goal uh, just on the weekend, he can make last second man runs, late runs into the box and get on the end of crosses. So, you know, for me right now, I think that it's it's very tough between those two and you don't have to choose between them, but that is the way I'm leaning. Now, last midfield pick, I think is a fun one, right? There are quite a few options here. I think Madison is a good pick, despite the fact that he's not been in great form. It's a good fixture on paper, home to Wolves, when there aren't too many other options. But I think, as I've mentioned with, with, with Johnson already, I think I want to get a, a Palace player in here. And... Even if money was no option, no no uh, no barrier really. Let's just say, even though it is for my team, but my team value is pretty bad. I think I would still go Eze, even if I had unlimited cash. He seems to just be playing really well right now. Good form. Yeah, it's a bit of a gut one, but if it's between Elise, Zaha, Eze, why not? I think I think in that in that regard, just just pick your favourite. And Eze is just yeah, he seems to just have have new newfound confidence with with Hodgson back in the fold and why not go for him it's a good fixture Everton shockingly to me have been really quite poor defensively since Dice has come in which I just would never have predicted when he came in I thought okay that's it now avoid attackers against Everton especially at Goodison Park but even at Goodison Park they've been poor defensively conceding you know over 2xg per game and away from home it's even worse so so there you go for me I think some Palace coverage going forward is important. And I think I think Eze is fine. Okay, then. That is the midfield. Going with a 3-4-3 three, three overall, which means that up front, I think, the, I think the, the last Arsenal player is obvious in this team. However, I do want to mention that there are serious minutes concerns with Jesus. Let's, let's bring him up here, actually. You know what? He's one of those players that, that on his day, of course, could haul. It's, it's got haul potential, doesn't it? Southampton at home. Who knows? Could be on penalties now as well. I mean, we don't know any of these three could be on penalties. Saka, of course, could still be on penalties. But he, he is getting subbed quite early, which is a little bit of a risk. And it's not what you want, obviously, in a free hit draft. The subs, as you're going to see, aren't the best in this team. Um, my team value isn't great. But yeah, 
for, for, for Jesus to be coming off in the 60th, 70th minute and being replaced, with the likes of Odegaard and Martelli staying on for 90s and Saka as well, it's not ideal. So I do think there is an argument to say that that Saka over Jesus is is a fine decision just based on minutes alone. However, it, given the current form of Jesus, I want him to be in that team. As I already mentioned, you know, the link up between him and Martinelli is great. Why not? I think they should score a good number of goals against Southampton, looking to bounce back. And yeah, he's in my team. A bit of Friday night fun. Let's go for it. Now, next forward, I think picks himself. No, no, even no need to even really chat too much about Ollie Watkins. Yes, it's an away fixture, and therefore on paper at least, it's not the best. Brentford are decent defensively, but come on, the man's in the form of his life. Uh, I think it'd be ludicrous not to put him in any free hit team. I don't see an argument for not putting him in. Simple as that. Last forward spot is a really interesting one. I think there are a few options here. If you want to go for it and you're chasing rank, I think a Liverpool forward is an option. Uh, the likes of the likes of Darwin. Why not? Whole potential there, as we've already mentioned with Liverpool players. If you wanted to double up on their attack, why not? Playing tonight, obviously, see how they do, and that's obviously gonna gonna kind of lead our lead our thinking on which Liverpool players to go with. But as it stands, I'm happy with these three. But Darwin could come into consideration. You've also got Isak Wilson. Tottenham not looking good defensively, obviously away from home and Newcastle, Newcastle are much more potent at Goodison Park. Just a different vibe there, let's be honest. However, the player that I've gone for, and this is this is controversial, I'll admit, is Harry Kane. Now, like Trippier, I don't think that there is another option up front that can match Kane or that's worth betting against Kane with. As I said with Trippier, if there was a clear standout that that was similar to Kane, I wouldn't care about his EO. You know, he's gonna he's still in a lot of teams, and not everyone is using the free hit chip this week, of course. But I just don't, again, I've mentioned a couple options there, but really we're looking through this. Who else is there? Tony at home to Villa, who have been very good defensively. As I mentioned, Isak. As I mentioned, Darwin. But again, with Darwin, you have the other three Liverpool players. And with Isak, would you really pick Isak over Kane in a one-off game? I think, forget you, I think I personally just don't see myself doing that, despite the fact that they're at home and Spurs aren't in good form. It's Harry Kane. I think that if you can afford it, and my team value is very poor, as I've said, so I think the majority of you guys watching would be able to. It's boring, I admit. But right now, that is the way I'm thinking. I do just want to mention Solanke as well. Now, Solanke is a player that I think could find his way into my team at some point. Right now, he's not, obviously. But a lot depends on the West Ham game, how they look after their first day Europa League, uh, Conference League game. Because if, if you know, if that, if that goes the distance, if they look tired, if they're not performing well, Solanke could be an option. But again, are you really going to pick Solanke over Kane? It just, I just wouldn't, I just can't see myself doing that. So yeah, my current thinking is to go for Kane and that is the team. I'll fill out the bench just because, you know, we'll, we'll see how it looks overall. Iverson comes in. Uh, I think he's a no-brainer for that for that sub goalie sp spot as he will play and he's got a decent fixture at home to Wolves. Who have we got? Uh, Andreas in midfield. I mean, these, these players really don't matter too much. Um, but yeah, plays uh, in defence. Williams, Nico Williams has a fixture. And then to be fair, the last defender, I would say just pick anyone. It says I've got 4 million here. I'd have a little bit more than that, but pick someone. I mean, it's so irrelevant, isn't it really? Let's 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 put someone in just because we might as well. I don't actually remember who I who I could put in, but yeah, why not? Let's put in a Marty. He's been training well of late, according to the manager. So there we go. In he goes for that, that game against Wolves. There it is. That's the team. Let me know your current thoughts on that down below. And if you do want to have a go at doing this yourself, as I said, the link to the tool is in the description. I'll be honest, I don't love it. It is slightly boring. But again, I think the main issues here are Trippier and Kane. And I, outside of those two guys, I really don't see much, many options. There is scope to get more fun with it. I mean, you could put in an Elise, you could go 3-5-2, 
and drop Trippier for anyone else. If you wanted to double up on the Palace defence, for example, I think that's pretty viable. But again, are you really going to pick someone like an Anderson over a Trippier? I think that the ceiling with Trippier is, is so high that forget EO, as I've already said, I would just do that anyway. I really would, just because of the, the, the potential there. And would it shock you? Would it shock you if if Trippier kept a clean sheet? I do just want to briefly mention the fact that, that people often say with free hit chips that you should go with your gut and play the fixture. And if you think that a certain team is going to win, you know, you make your prediction in your own mind, say for, for Newcastle Spurs, if you think that Newcastle win that game 1-2-0, then don't put Kane in your team. And I understand that. You, you'd, you'd bat the Newcastle defence over the Spurs attacker if that is the way you're thinking. However, given that I really, I'm not sure, you know, who else I would pick in that spot. For me, Kane is the obvious option. I just think in any given game week, would you have Solanke or Kane in your team? I don't even care who they're playing. That, that's the way I'm thinking. So then, as it stands, according to the Fancy Football Hub My Team tool, my game week is looking like this. 97% game week rating, a predicted points of 70.6, and an overall team rating of 92%. Now, of course, 97% on a free hit, yeah, it's very good, but it's not 100%. So I'm very interested to know which players I'm potentially missing out on here. Guys, if you can get a better rate than 97%, I'll be very interested to know who, which players have made it into the team that have improved that. But as it stands, I think this is what I'm, I'm likely to go with. I'm looking here, Eze with a 3.8 is pretty low and, and I imagine that that is where I'm falling down. I just have a good feeling about him. Yeah, his stats aren't the best and he's not been doing it for a long period of time, but you know, Everton at home, man, Everton at home. Captain C, final decision. Now I did say that it is potentially a challenging one, but looking at it, I mean, we'll go with the predicted points on this one of, of 9.1 for Salah and then no one else even within three points of him. Well, Trent, but you know what I mean. Salah, yeah, on penalties. Forrest at home, pretty obvious option. I would say that if Saka had been in better form and had converted that penalty, he would be in an option, of course. If you expected Arsenal to, to bat Southampton, then I think that's a fine shout. I probably wouldn't look at Jesus, Odegaard and Marstelli just because the points are generally spread a little bit more and that fixture is so good for Salah. But yeah, for me, Salah is, as it, as it stands, going to be the captain fixtures dependent and uh, of course looking at how he performs tonight but uh yeah that is the current side let me know your thoughts down below on my uh on my logic there let me know it's an interesting one i will say that but um we're going to be seeing over the next few days some experts decisions and obviously they're going to come with stats facts logic and i'm looking forward to that because it's probably going to influence my decision making not going to lie but as it stands that is where i'm leaning with my current setup guys Hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your, your current drafts down below as always. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow with the next video.